For 364 days of the year, the spear remained out of sight. For one day every year, it was removed, the star attraction of a major festival, the Feast of the Holy Lance. This took place on the second Friday after Easter, and this was, in a way, a kind of another super Easter. Started by Charles IV a century earlier, the festival became Nuremberg's premier attraction and drew pilgrims from all over the Holy Roman Empire. So, sometimes quite surprising how many people traveled to these great pilgrim centers. Often, if you were poor, it would have been a question of walking at perhaps the rate of a, a dozen miles a day. So it would have taken months, possibly even a year, to get to the place. In the city center, thousands flocked to a specially constructed temporary chapel. Inside it, on the top floor, nobles and clergy solemnly gathered to take part in the display of the relics. There was a sliver from the manger, for example, a tooth of John the Baptist, an arm bone of St. Anne. The very last of the relics to be displayed was the Holy Lance. It was the culmination. Pilgrims would have been overwhelmed with awe these were things which really brought them into contact with the supernatural. These were things that reassured them of the validity of their faith. This was a very serious event in anyone's life. But the merchants of Nuremberg were less interested in saving people's souls than emptying pockets, because pilgrimage was big business. Because relics were so important in the late Middle Ages, it was inevitable they'd be abused. We know that a traffic began to develop. See these relics, get to heaven quicker, but there is a fee. And inevitably, there were many people who felt this was an abuse. The spear continues to cast its spell. Back in Nuremberg, the Festival of the Holy Lance is being recreated for the first time in centuries. Music and song that once blessed thousands of pilgrims rings out once more. 